carbohydrates. Are they good? Are they bad? Should we eat them? Should we not? And if so, which one should we be eating? There's a lot of confusion and mixed messaging around carbohydrates that has made it very difficult for a lot of people to navigate nutrition. That's why in this video, I'm going to talk briefly about the need for carbohydrates as well as which ones are good and which ones are bad and how actually labeling them those ways is not very helpful. Welcome to my channel. I'm Holly Evernewell, fitness and nutrition coaching. I'm a registered dietitian, holistic nutritionist, and personal trainer. And carbs are a big part of my world because of that. And I'm constantly talking to clients about them. The tricky part is that what may be good for one person could be bad for another. And I'll give some examples of that later. But let's start by talking about carbohydrates in general. Should we eat them? Are they good for us? Yes, we need carbohydrates. No, they are not bad for us. Yes, we should all be eating them in some form. Carbohydrates are our primary source of energy and the primary source of energy that our brains use. So it's very important to have carbohydrates in your diet. So then which types of carbohydrates are good and which types are bad? First of all, when we put foods into very specific categories like that, it causes a lot of problems. A lot of people have unhealthy relationships with food. They kind of live in this diet culture mentality where if you eat a certain food, you should now feel guilty or bad about it. So we're not going to really talk about carbs in those ways, but there are carbohydrates that are more beneficial to the body and are more optimal for health. And then there are carbohydrates that either don't do really anything for you or are actually contributing to health issues and diseases. Also, the amount of carbohydrate that you consume can be very different for different types of people. So there's no set amount that everybody needs. Typically, the more active you are, the more muscle you have, maybe if you're someone who does endurance activities or participates in sports, those people are gonna need far more carbohydrates than the average population. And then you have other populations, such as people who have diabetes, who are gonna have to eat a lower amount of carbohydrates and be more careful about how they space them out throughout their day. So as you can see, it's not one simple answer that applies across the board. Let's start with carbohydrates that are really beneficial and offer the most health benefits. Here's how I like to think about it and teach people to as well. The carbohydrates that you want the most of in your diet should be God-made foods, natural, whole sources that haven't gone through a lot of processing. So essentially, if it's something that you could plant or pick, then it's a really good choice of carbohydrate. For example, Potatoes, rice, fruits, vegetables, beans, legumes, honey, and maple syrup. These are all natural sources of carbohydrates that God put on our earth that we can continue to plant, garden, harvest, and consume in their most natural and wholesome state. One of the things that sets these carbohydrates apart is their fiber content. And this is a really helpful way to know what are some carbohydrates that are going to help you the most versus the ones that have been more man-made, have been made in a lab, have been heavily processed, and now no longer contain the same nutrients as those natural versions. So all of these plant sources of carbohydrates are typically going to have a greater amount of fiber in them. And fiber helps to slow down digestion, it can help with high cholesterol levels, it helps to keep you full longer, and it helps to feed the good bacteria in your gut. So if it doesn't naturally have fiber in it, there's a good chance it's not one of the best sources for you. And this does not include added fiber into processed foods. So that's becoming very popular now where you might see chicory root fiber or inulin. These comes in a lot of packaged foods now, as well as things like protein bars. So I'm not talking about added fiber, I'm talking about foods that have it naturally. These foods were also made in a wonderful way by God where they are these perfect little packages of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, polyphenols, and again, fiber. So you get all of these really beneficial things for your health in these natural sources of carbohydrates. Also worth noting is you will find carbohydrates in other foods. So you'll find a smaller amount in things like nuts, avocado, yogurt, so it's not that they only come in those plant forms, but those are the primary sources. But you will find them in other foods as well. Another reason why you can't always classify these foods as good or bad is it depends on your health status. So for example, a person with celiac disease or a gluten intolerance or an intolerance to the protein avenin in oats won't be able to eat certain whole grains. 
The carbohydrate sources that you want to be a little bit more cautious with and limit more in your diet are those that are more man-made, packaged, or highly processed. These are foods that you wouldn't find in nature. So things like potato chips, brownies, pastries, candy, pretzels, white bread, pasta, tortillas, soda, even to some extent fruit juices. Many of these, if you think about it, are actually a bit more of a food-like substance than they are actual food because a lot of it is these chemicals that have been put together by people often in a lab that you don't find combined in nature. They often include things like chemicals, artificial flavors, artificial sweeteners, colors, dyes, and preservatives, and a lot of these things can be toxic to the body. They also lack naturally occurring vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants like whole food sources have. Sometimes they get added back into the product after the fact in order to keep the population healthy, but this is not how they come naturally. One of the concerns with these types of carbohydrates is that they tend to be very high in calorie, but low in nutrients, and they're not very filling. So it's really easy to overeat them. I'm sure we've all experienced this eating a ton of potato chips or popcorn or cookies, and you can eat a lot of them before you even realize that you're very full. And they don't really keep you full very long because a lot of times they're primarily carbohydrates. They don't have much fiber or fat or protein to keep you satiated. So you can consume a lot more calories without feeling full. And this is part of the reason why a lot of people in our world are struggling with things like obesity. These foods can also contribute to cravings. They often have a lot of added sugar and a lot of sodium. And again, not a lot of actual nutrient density. So because of those strong, yummy flavors, but you're not actually getting your nutrient needs met, your body will tend to crave them more. And especially with sugar, the more you eat, the more you tend to crave it without feeling particularly satisfied. So this doesn't mean that you can never eat this, these foods, that they're off limits. It just means that it's best to eat them a little bit more sparingly and eat the other types of carbohydrates more often so that you're optimizing your health. Typically, if you can consume more of the most beneficial God-made carbohydrates and less of the more man-made, highly processed carbohydrates, you are going to feel so much better, have better energy, and even have an easier time losing weight if that's one of your goals. As one more example of why it's hard to completely classify foods into good or bad is that it depends on the situation. So some of these more processed carbohydrates that are simple carbohydrates like bagels or pasta or even something like fruit snacks, these can actually be very beneficial to someone who, let's say, is hypoglycemic. Maybe they have diabetes and their blood sugar went super low and they need to spike it up quickly. These foods can help. Or for an athlete, prior to a competition, these foods can be really helpful for fast energy, easy digesting lots of calories. Whereas if they were to eat a sweet potato and an apple or some broccoli before an endurance event, they could have some major GI upset that could mess up their whole performance. So knowing the right reasons for these foods and using them in the right timing in the right amounts is a big part of understanding carbohydrates and how they can benefit our health or compromise some of our goals. So that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If there are things you wanted to know that I didn't cover in this video, then please leave a comment down below or a question and I will do my best to respond to you. Also, I have a macronutrient guide that I've created for my clients that goes over the basics of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and the best options. If you would like that, please contact me. You can email me at renewalfitcoach at gmail.com and I would be happy to send it to you. And if you'd like more personalized one-on-one -on -one support for figuring out exactly what is best for you, then reach out to me again at renewalfitcoach at gmail.com and I would be happy to book a free consult with you to discuss nutrition coaching. Additionally, on my website, I have some meal plans that you can purchase as well as some free options. So you might want to visit there and download one because all of these include very natural whole food sources of not only carbohydrates, but protein and fat to be the best for your health, your microbiome, your energy, and whatever your health goals may be. Thank you for watching. If this was helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss future videos and maybe share with a friend who may be equally confused about carbohydrates. And until the next video, blessings on your health and fitness journeys.